door closes and the other door opens? Well, Lydia Samatar, who was my lovely friend who, uh, she, she was upstairs. She made the mistake of coming to the library <laughs> on a day that um, she had just gotten back from a trip to, from Ethiopia and Kenya. And she taught in Kenya, was it, or Somalia? Or no, Somalia. In Somalia. Oh, years ago. She is, she's a wonderful lady, she's very bright, and she, and she offered, after I asked her, <laughs> and she didn't run out, um, I, she said, but I don't have my papers, I don't have my pictures, I have nothing. I said, that's fine, I'll ask the question, and so will everyone else. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, Kenya made the... Um, the news. I saw a movie, Eye in the Sky, with Helen yeah, Mirren yeah, last yeah. week, and I don't know whoever oh, has seen good. it, but it was taken, it was in Kenya, and um, the story literally is about the drones that fly over to get the terrorists, and there was a terrorist in the home in Kenya, and uh, the decision making, by the way, drones that you think are flying over, they're being controlled <coughs> by men, Air Force people, in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. So that in itself, and you see this young man who has to make a decision, do you kill the two terrorists that you know are there when there's a little girl with a hula hoop? And the whole story is that. I didn't give away anything. All I know is that you keep thinking about it after you leave, and you say, what would you do? And, um, and, that, and Kenya is a friendly country to us. And um, they also, their soldiers were involved in it. So in any case, there's so much to hear about this wonderful trip that this lovely lady did. So I thank, I always thank everyone for all their time and, and trouble for all the people like Branch who sets up the, the cameras and, and Shanice who sets up the tables and everything. I couldn't do these programs without them. I couldn't do it without you, and I especially couldn't do it without a guest, so please, <laughs> so please, let's give a very warm welcome to our dear friend, oh. Lydia Samatar. And when I tell people if they don't like it, they get their money back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we have chalk? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. No, nothing like being totally unprepared. <laughs> well, it's true. I made a trip, and I, I thought I would like to share with you sometime about it. But I didn't come with any of my notes or anything. A lot of details I thought you might be interested in, but right now I'm going to be vague, I believe. So, what was this trip? Well, I went in February, which was the anniversary month of losing my husband. Um, and so I tried to get close to his country one more time in my life. And that would be Somalia. Of course, I can't go there. Um, but I went. I found a trip. I was invited to join this group, um, a tour group, 14 of us, four leaders who were very well acquainted with the cultures and the countries because they spent years there. And some of them knew the language. Um, so I myself had never been to Ethiopia. I'd like to say about that country, the pronunciation of the name, I learned finally that it's foreigners who say Ethiopia. The people in that country, they just say Ethiopia. So it's really easier <laughs> to pronounce than to try to say every little syllable. Well, that was news to me. Like I say, I had never been there, so it was a new country, even though it borders Somalia. I told you it borders Somalia, but what else does it border? We don't have a map of Africa, so let's think about Ethiopia as such an ancient land. Everybody knows about it, something about it, I think. So let's see if we can name the other countries that border Ethiopia. 
Oh, careful. careful. I don't think Egypt. Okay. Sudan. I hope I didn't. It must be Sudan. No, it's in my notes. Sudan. to come downstairs. She's Ethiopian. My dear friend works upstairs. We might need her. Okay. Okay. Let's try. Let's start out. Now, I don't think it's a cool. I don't think Egypt is one. Angola. Oh, Eritrea. Yes. Let me get a map. Is it, on, is it on the coastline? Ethiopia, you mean? Yes. Does it have a coastline? I mean, I so. yeah. Or is it landlocked? Um, it is northeast Africa. Mm. We have it here. Do you want the entire list? Yes. All right. Okay. We have Djibouti. Oh, did you look it yeah. up? Well, I thought people already know first. Give me some more. Uh, Djibouti, Kenya. Yes. Somalia, as you said, South Sudan, and Sudan. Good. Let's see. And it's on the coast, right? Oh, that I didn't check. I didn't check that. Uh, Sudan. <laughs> South Sudan. Well, now we have South Sudan as a separate country, yeah. so that's another one. Djibouti, Lydia, there's something about being in the library. <laughs> I couldn't yell at the back like a genius, but I'm happy you just look at this map. He knows where it is. It's we that don't know. I know. But now we all will learn. Oh, sorry. And what's the number seven? Okay. South Sudan? I have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's Somalia? Yes, we have Somalia. It's right on the Indian Ocean. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Wow, I can't think of number seven. It doesn't show on that map. Tanzania? No. Oh, Tanzania is not. Well, we got six out of seven. Do we have seven? No. But like I said, I don't have my notes. At least I Google this. So six. The map. That's great. Thank you. Let's see. No, nothing. Uh, there's no uh, coast, according to this map. Yeah, I don't have a question. And it should have said it's on there. Well, that would be wonderful. They only have six. This lady had the list of They only list six. Yeah. Okay, I'll do a little research. <laughs> anyway, it is. It's a lot of countries that border Ethiopia. My trip, we, we spent almost three weeks in Ethiopia and then only about five days in Kenya, which does border. So we flew to Nairobi for the uh, last few days of our trip, and that was a different experience, of course, a different country, again, different language and different, um, different money in every country. Um, all right, so um, my impressions of Ethiopia. First of all, I, I already have a lot of Ethiopian friends, and Ethiopians and Somalis are similar people in that they are not Negroid Africans, they are not Bantu. Um, they look a lot alike. Sometimes they have been called black Caucasians. They, they have fine features, long hair, the women, their hair grows long. They're black, different shades of black. They're unusually handsome and beautiful, which you may already know. <laughs> I went as a teacher to Somalia in the 60s, and uh, those people sitting in my class, I just I just stood in front of them, just admired them. They're so beautiful to look at, both men and women. 
beautiful people, and the Ethiopians the same. Um, and those two cultures, <coughs> actually, they like each other when they get a chance, like if they're both in America, they can easily be the best of friends, but politics separated them and made them enemies. And that's just so sad to me that uh, people who would naturally gravitate to being friends anyway have to be enemies, you know, because of oh, all kinds of issues like border issues and you know, that they fight over, have to fight over. It's sad. Okay, what can I tell you? Maybe you have to ask me some questions. Well, what were they fighting over? Oh, borders. The, they have a long border with Somalia. And in fact, my husband, just to give you an example of the complicated uh, issues that come up, uh, he was ethnic Somali, but he was born on the Ethiopian side, <coughs> where Somalis live. Because it's a nomadic culture, and you know, who cares about a border? You just take your animals and go with your herds wherever you can find water and what they need. Um, and so, as soon as you had nation building, and you had nations like Somalia becoming an independent country, well, then you've got your borders, and you, it becomes a big issue. So they had issues with Kenya, with Ethiopia, and, well, actually, two parts of Somalia were the only ones that actually became independent. And that was the British and the Italian, not the French, which is still Djibouti. So, um, what am I trying to explain? <laughs> no, we have Meti, who is so wonderful, and yes. who is to tell us about your culture. I'm just trying to list all the countries that border. That's it? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Looks correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. No. 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 Ten years, ten, more than ten years, ten, twelve years. And uh, Ethiopia is a nice ancient country. Oh, uh, with yeah, it's a lot of culture and um, language. So we're like fourteen ethnics together, but Amharic is the national language. But um, the others we have uh, different language in the same, but we don't understand each other. <laughs> 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 the same country, but they have their own language and culture, but Amharic is the dominant language one, and they have our cultural food, cultural dress, and things like that. We all share um, one capital, which is in Addis Ababa, uh, and then a lot of people come to, you know, to the main city. So, yeah. You, be, uh, you went to Addis Ababa to the city? Yeah. That's all we do. We have uh, the economy based on agriculture. Coffee is the main export. We export uh, coffees. Uh, if you go to Starbucks, you will see uh, <laughs> coffee from Ethiopia. It's a very nice, tasty coffee. Uh, have you been? How about religion? Aren't there, what are the religions that are um, uh, prevalent? In yeah, we have um, um, yeah, Orthodox Christian and Muslim, but um, the main one is Orthodox Christian. Uh, that's the religion we have. Uh, a lot of 
ancient church if you go to outside the city, Aksum, Lalibala, yeah. I have a story to share about religion in Ethiopia. I had a friend who at 16, a male friend, he went to become a seaman to come to the United States. And when he got here, he suddenly realized that the things his parents had been doing in the house meant that they were Jewish. They would close the curtains and light candles on Friday night and say a prayer. He had no idea what that meant, but they did it in secret. And when he came here and met, and met Jewish people here, he realized that his parents were Jewish. Yeah, you normally, um, Jewish, and yeah, um, I am also a Christian. I mean, my parents and my ancestors are all. So we don't know, most, they influence us, whatever they believe, they don't expose us to other religions. That's why maybe some of them, they keep it sacred. But if you go to one um, <coughs> countryside, which is Gondor, yeah. some of them, Felician, they call them Felician, they, yeah. Jewish yeah. people, you find yeah. them there. Yeah. That's why. Did they say that the lost tribe ended up there? Yes, yes. The Jewish religion. The they of keep the earth. Orthodox Judaism there. They grow beards and they yeah. do prayers. Right. See? Uh, that's true. Yeah, and that's they're still there. It's a fact. Yeah, I know. That also, and also the Art of Covenant mm -hmm. that brought um, uh, Minelik. They call it Minelik, yeah. Yeah. So still in the um, Anch in uh, Lalibala. They have it. Is it in Lalibala or is it in Aksum? Aksum. 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 In Aksum. So it's a very... Let me talk about that. You saw that place? Okay. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> okay. Yes. 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 I, I would like to say a little bit about that. Ark of the Covenant. Ethiopians believe they have the original one. Um, you know, that it, it was brought from Israel, from Jerusalem. Yeah. Um, King Menelik, his son, I think it was his son, um, but King Menelik asked him to bring it to Ethiopia, didn't he? And supposedly he did, but I guess we don't have any any proof. <coughs> do we? I mean, I don't know. If we they do, but, they but I saw where it is <laughs> housed. Yeah. Yes, it was in, in this place, and now they built a new place, and it's now housed in here. But it's in Aksum, yeah. very it's ancient famous. part of Ethiopia. And um, I couldn't, of course, go inside and see it, but I could see where it was supposedly housed. Why but in the Orthodox, okay. oh, oh, in the Orthodox churches today in Ethiopia, they have a replica of the Ark in their own churches. Even those I wasn't allowed to see. I mean, they're covered oh, by they curtains. Cover very too sacred for anybody. Except priests. Priest, the monk, you have to be the a monk, priest or a monk. monk. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, that's very interesting. They talk about it a lot. I mean, it's just it's, they they are so conscious of the fact that they have it. <laughs> How did you yeah. wind up in South Arm? <laughs> there, there's a good topic. <laughs> no, actually, I live in Bloomfield. I work in South Orange. Um, I came here uh, for a visit. I got an invitation back in 1995, I think. Uh, my cousin invited me for her graduation. And then I came. That was a six month visit. And I liked it. I said, oh, what if I stay? You know? I love that. So I went back home and I said, um, still my parents live there. I said, I want to live in America. I mean, when I, you know, I was like, that's like a dream. <laughs> so it's a lot, the lifestyle, everything, you know, it's impressive. So I said, I decided to move here. And I came, I went to school and I got married. You know, life become one after another. I got children, now that's how I end up here. But you wind up in a town with so many Eritreans. In Bloomfield? No, in South Orange. South Orange, yeah. South Orange, I work here, but I'm not, I don't live in South Orange. I work here. Right. But I live in Bloomfield. Yes, quite a few Eritreans I met here. Yes. Yeah. So um, we used to be one, mm -hmm. but um, they've been fought for a long time to do one their own independent. 
and finally they have their own uh, right. uh, government and things like that. They become independent. What did your family do in Ethiopia? Well, okay, my what family. would be your future in Ethiopia if you stayed there? Oh, in Ethiopia, yeah. In, if I stay there, I can go to, I mean, you know, regular like uh, any job. Uh, maybe a um, restaurant or a school or te being a teacher or um, ticket office, things like that. All right. You well, can work. Yeah, my, my father works for a government office. Um, it's like a city hall here. Yeah. So he does that. My, my mom is a housewife. housewife. Yeah. In Ethiopia, as a culture back then, they don't let um, women to go to school. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> but in our generation, they send us school. Things change, yeah. So my mom, um, my mom, my parents sent me to school since uh, I was like from the kindergarten. In our generation, things change. But back then, women get married very young, like 10, 15, you know, very young, stays in the house, they raise the kids. Only men go out and work. Was it an arranged marriage? No, yeah, okay. well, most of the time arranged marriage. They don't let, even my generation, they don't let us to date, uh, no. Okay. So they're very conscious and we don't date any boys. <laughs> yeah. Because of all that's going on in Somalia, politically, is there any spillover of any of that extreme attitudes unto the Islamic people in uh, not that um, here um, since I'm here um, I don't get that much uh, information about them but yeah the government is very strict they fought back to Somalians and so far they're good nothing major happened to Ethiopians Um, Nessie, I think you're wonderful. You're the best worker, really. Everything. I didn't know how you could learn a language so quickly, unless you were taught it at school. No, when if we, I went to there, I don't think. I, <laughs> yeah, Amharic is a very difficult language. It's yeah. difficult, and so it's very completely different than the English one. But when when I was at school, starting high school, um, they give us English as a subject. In high so yeah. Uh, once after ninth grade, I think all the subjects become English. Like we take the um, um, only Amharic become as a subject, and physics, chemistry, science, math becomes. We take it as English subject. Okay. So um, the high school and the the university is all English. Wow. Yeah. I I visited one college that actually was offering. Uh, college courses in Amharic because they were trying to educate, uh, you know, adults that didn't have English, but they were ready for higher education. And so they were actually teaching some of the courses in Amharic. Or, yeah, they were at this college which I thought was great because these people don't have time to get enough English to to do college level work in English, you know, but the, now they can get higher education in Amharic. Okay, that's so that I like that myself. Let's leave in reverse that. My son and daughter-in-law <coughs> were in Africa for fourteen yeah. years. Okay. Which which and country? Well, she was with the UN. She was in Ethiopia. If she was in Sudan. Yes, well, the, one of the first things I noticed about Somalia when I went there in the 60s, and 
I went partly because I wanted to learn a new language. So I did work on Somali, but at the time it was not yet written. It had no orthography. So it was a matter of listening to people. <laughs> but isn't that the dilemma of teaching college classes in the indigenous language? There are no books. There's yeah, that's no what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, it's difficult yeah. to find a book that yeah. goes to the university, and then it's very hard to exactly. find Exactly. Yeah. So what do you think accounted for the change generationally to educate women? What caused it? Yeah. Be Okay, because the influence of Western and, you know, the new generation more, ex, you know, exposed to the this new technology influence of the Western, you know, the kids say, no, we have to go to school, we have to do this, the movie can start coming in, the internet, the, you know, things like that. Yeah. So, uh, and then the parent realize, oh, you know, the importance of education, educating women, so, so they want to send their kids to school, even the moment they have, it doesn't matter if they're a boy or girl, so, so with the they want... Would the language of finances be English predominantly today, or commerce? So it's a necessity basically in, in terms of the global economy? Yes, yes. Okay. Education okay. is a necessity, uh, regardless of the language. Yeah, um, Amharic. Is, is our native language, but right. it doesn't take us anywhere right. because it's just in Ethiopia. Right. Even in Ethiopia, there's a lot of foreign companies coming in. You see a lot of construction, and then to get in that job field, job market, you have to speak now English what, fluent. Also, what is the position in terms of women, for example, as you well know? Yeah. You know, Hillary is running, but yeah. the first, perhaps. I know. But, but what's the position of women? And as according her needs. For example, I have a niece. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be a captain. Her father is a pilot. Um, so she wanted to be a captain. She insists. Okay, she's now 29. She finished high school. They have a nice private school in Ethiopia, like English school, French, you know. So she finished, she graduated from English school there. She came here. She graduated, she went to Florida, she got her first pilot degree, she went back to Ethiopia, and then now she's flying uh, 767. Wow. So, no borders, they laid them through whatever they can do. Yeah. She, uh, if I get a chance, if she comes for a visit, I would like her to come here and she will have to give you a talk. She's a very young... The, the, excuse me? In government positions, there also are women in high yeah. positions? Yeah, no limitation. And, and yeah. what is the system of government? Now, uh, before, <coughs> before first we have uh, uh, imperial and monarchy system, before us like uh, 40 years ago, and then <coughs> this uh, dictatorship Mengistu is like a socialist one. He was like very dominant, people didn't like it. For 17 years he was ruling the country very badly. But this, <coughs> another rebellion group came and they threw him out and they're now giving us a democracy. It's a democratic country now. So they're, they're doing, improving a lot of things. The economy is growing. They let all the Chinese people doing their roads. So you will see a lot of uh, construction and economy is growing good and people got a lot of freedom. Could you talk a little bit about the agriculture? Uh, I mean, you're talking about cities. Yeah, yeah. Um, but can you, okay. is there not a famine? Is there not uh, food shortages? Uh, yeah, but, uh, the economy based on a farming, on farming. So um, uh, the rural area is still based on farming. Uh, the farmers, Still, you know, they're doing their, uh, they don't have that much, um, this new, uh, like, uh, tractors, equipment, yes. so that, that's a, we have still working, they're still working on that because of that, they're, they have shortage of producing the grain that they want. But some region, I heard that some famine is going on, yes. uh, but they're trying to balance the farmer, the government is stepping in. So things, they provide the farmers with all the equipment and things that to produce all the uh, so grain and things. Is there import of food? 
We we export, no import. We export coffee, I think, um, and um, other grains like um, wheat, teff, teff. Uh -huh. you, you may, uh, they've become very famous yes, now because yes. it's gluten-free, it's become, if you help, right. go health-wise, it's the uh, main thing now. Yes. So, if it's the, we produce a lot of teff uh -huh. in Ethiopia. And then, it's a healthy exported. one, exported, uh -huh. and that egg. In Gerard, have you, have you been in Ethiopian restaurant, maybe, if you have that yeah. experience? Yeah. yeah. So, uh -huh. that, the bread, the yeah. big bread, she the made, softest yeah. one, do you think came that's a flower made a day flower. Uh -huh. so, yes. Yes. Didn't they make a movie about Idi Amin one time? How they overthrew him? A movie? It's a different country. That's a different country. That's a different country. So where does the majority of the population reside? Is it, is it rural or is it in the cities? Um, most of it in a rural area, but now I don't know why everybody wants to come to the city. Yeah. The city is so crowded, so crowded, uh, but they have to do something about that. Everyone wants to come to the city. <laughs> I understand because living in the rural area is a hard work. You have to go, you know, since based on the agriculture thing, uh, the farmers push their kids. You know, even if they send them to school after school, they make them work with the cattle, with the farming, with the so kids. You know, they don't want to do that kind of thing. They want to go to the city, and the city is getting crowded every time. How do the people consider the legacy of Haley Selassie? We always thought of him here as a hero, but I understand that's not true today. He, he he was, there is two parts. You know, uh, life in Ethiopia is like, uh, there is no middle class. The rich is rich, the poor is poor. So most of the rich come from the imperial, like Haile Selassie's uh, um, era. So still those worship him, want him, you know, they want to continue his legacy. And those are the poor, still they were like <coughs> peasants and things like that. They don't want uh, his legacy to continue. So there is two uh, yeah. opposite sides, no middle class. So mm -hmm. that's the thing. But as far as I know, his last says he did his, you know, back then he did his best. It was like he was doing, um, trying to do the right things. He was uh, letting, you know, putting the university, but he's not including everybody. That was the problem. You know? Yeah. Okay, let me just, uh, just show a contrast uh, between the two countries, Somalia and Ethiopia, because with Haile Selassie, if he showed up, anywhere he went, people bowed down to the ground. Somalis, they are Muslim, they will not bow down to any human being. So, you know, for them, they bow down, but they bow down to God, Allah, and nobody else. was so different, you know. <laughs> and really, I would say Haile Selassie remains very controversial. He did good things. He helped some very needy people. He, he did some good things, but, but he was an emperor, and he had all of the power. And it did not go down to the lowest of the people. So, it, he had to go. <laughs> he was there from 1931 to 1974. When um, military leaders overthrew him. So he was an emperor. And he had all the power. 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 And he had all the power
Somali. Somali. That's Somali. what the Somali. Yeah, that but sounds excellent. like her. Excellent. Yeah. Not in Egypt. Yeah. She married that man. She right. went to Canada. Oh, correct. Yeah. Correct. That was the Somali one. But Ethiopia, yeah. yeah, used to be arranged marriage. The thing is, the husband is too much age difference. Is he could be an older guy, and the lady is very young, like 16 or 12 years. So, and the husband might be 32, and then she thinks like she doesn't think him like her husband, like a have a father or things. So, that was the problem. But still a problem? No, not anymore. No, now kids are allowed to date. It's completely like Western style, so things. No arranged marriage anymore. But at least there is some ruler country, maybe. My house. The old tribes, probably. Yeah, old ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank So, what made you, you know, made the trip so special? Okay, well, uh, when we went to Kenya, and by the way, that is one place where I did not feel safe. I felt safe in Ethiopia. Hmm. <laughs> Good. But in Kenya, oh wow, oh boy. I mean, even our bus drivers, they roll up the windows, we're driving through this section of Nairobi, um, can't have a window open. Uh, very kind, loving, <laughs> yeah. they love their neighbor, no stranger at all, like, you know. Yeah. I had a hard time when I came here because what? I think everybody's nice, and I don't, oh, they are. And, yeah, yeah, but I don't know what the idea of stranger, you can think, you know, you drive, someone asks you, you know, in Ethiopia, you drive and someone asks you, you open the road, let him take him around, please don't do that, why is it? Because you never know, what do you mean you never, it took me a year to Mm. Yeah, so that's very kind. Uh, if Helpful. you come, somebody knocks and then ask you're hungry, you let him in. If you feed him, if, if he wants to stay the night, you let him. We don't ask background who are you not in. <laughs> that's the Well, Kenya uh, is having a lot of struggles, but, but we, we went to, uh, to a game park. That's what we were doing in Kenya. We did see some of Nairobi, some sections, as I was telling you, but but our main purpose in being, going to Kenya, I think, was to see the wild animals. So we went to a very nice resort, really, an Aga Khan establishment, if you know who that is, and uh, wow. Um, so we went on safari every morning before breakfast and saw wonderful animals. We saw everything you can imagine except a rhino. But well, one time somebody said, that's a rhinoceros over there next to that little white egret. Well, I didn't see anything I would call a rhinoceros. So. Uh, but I did see everything else. It was absolutely beautiful. So we'd go in the morning and then we'd go again about 4 o'clock in the afternoon the times when the animals are more lively. And it was very successful and very nice. Um, but I, 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 I,